Hello and welcome back. So what I want to do today is continue looking at PLL circuits and in particular look at one of the major applications, the modulating FM signals. So what I want to do is look at the basic principle behind this, how the PLL demodulator works and also look at how the basic components of the PLL need to be designed for this specific applications. Finally, I want to build the circuit and test it out. So if you're curious, then keep watching. So first of all, how does FM work? I mean, what is frequency modulation? So if we have a carrier signal and a message that we want to encode, one method is by amplitude modulation, in which we take the carrier signal and change its amplitude based on the message that we're trying to encode. And the other major method is by frequency modulation. This is a technique where the amplitude of the signal stays constant, but the frequency varies. So the center frequency will stay the frequency of our carrier signal, but we will have slight deviations above and below this initial frequency. Hence the term frequency modulation. Now generating this sort of frequency modulated signal can be easily achieved by using a voltage controlled oscillator or VCO. Now this is a circuit that I covered in a previous video so I won't be going into too many details other than saying that it's not that difficult of a process. So obtaining frequency modulated signals is not so complicated. Now extracting our message from this frequency modulated signal is a completely different story. There's multiple circuits that can be used to achieve this goal, one of them being using a PLL or phase lock loop circuit that we will be analyzing today. Now to build the PLL, we need a phase detector, a low pass filter to filter the output of the phase detector, and a voltage controlled oscillator, whose output will be driving the phase detector where it will be compared with our initial input signal. Now, if we remember how the initial frequency modulated signal was created, well, we needed to take our message and drive a voltage controlled oscillator with it. And if we come back here, the only way to keep the loop stable is if the output frequency of our VCO is the same as our input frequency. And the only way to obtain that is if our driving signal is the same as our initial message. So the output of this PLL circuit will not be the output of the VCO, but rather the signal driving the VCO. So the only way to keep this loop stable is if we have our initial message at a different scale, of course, driving our VCO. So this will be the signal that we will be looking at and the signal that we will be interested in with the PLL. Now, regarding the actual signal that we will be demodulating, normally you don't really work with the initial radio signal, but rather with a different signal. So commonly in a radio, you've got your antenna picking up the signal, you've got a local radio frequency tuner, and you've got a local oscillator. So the two circuits, the tuner and the oscillator, have interlinked frequencies so that when you mix them, you can obtain always a constant frequency called the intermediate frequency. So this way, regardless of the frequency at which your radio station is transmitting at, the signal that you will be working with is always constant, the intermediate frequency. And in radios working in the FM range, normally this intermediate frequency can be 10.8 megahertz or something around five, or there's quite a lot of frequencies commonly used. But the point is you have a very clearly defined fixed frequency around which your signal is encoded. And this is important to keep in mind when designing our PLL demodulator. So we don't need to build a VCO that can cover a very wide frequency range, but rather a fixed frequency with a small deviation. And because this frequency deviation is so small, we can also choose one type of phase detector or another. So commonly with FM demodulating PLLs, a type one phase detector is used. This is because it's a very simple circuit, so it will have a very fast response. With this PLL, we want to be able to handle signals that have very fast variations. The type one detector is also more resistant to noise, so it will ignore any sort of spurious noise far more easily. And this circuit can be built either as a digital phase detector, so with logic gates, 
or it can be built as an analog phase detector. So now, to clearly understand how this works, how the PLL loop will stabilize, let's remember how the type 1 phase detector works. So if we have two input signals of the same frequency, the output will go from a minimum up to a maximum based on the phase difference between the two input signals. So it will go from 0 to 180 to a maximum and then back down to the minimum value at 360 degrees. Now on the other hand, if the two signals have different frequencies, so what I drew here is two signals that have different frequencies, and if we look at what we would get if we would pass these two through an exclusive OR gate, well we get something like this, so this highly depends on your drawing skills, but in reality, if you filter the output, you get something like a sine wave that will be running at the frequency equal to the frequency difference of your two initial signals. So if you pass two signals of different frequencies through a type 1 phase detector, at the output you'll get an oscillation going from the minimum to the maximum value of the output that the phase detector can provide at the frequency which is equal to the frequency difference of the two input signals. So a type 1 phase detector can be implemented either with a logic gate, an exclusive OR, or with an analog signal mixer. So something like a Gilbert cell can be used to provide this sort of wide swing output based on the input signals. So now if we come back to our PLL, when we first turn it on, we probably have different frequencies on the input, so the output starts to oscillate, but since this oscillation is at the full swing of the phase detector, at some point somewhere, the output signal going into the voltage controlled oscillator will generate a frequency equal to that of the initial frequency. So quite quickly, the PLL will stabilize and it will get into this bit where the two frequencies are equal. And then if there's any sort of deviation in any of the frequencies, on a very small scale, it will be implemented as a phase deviation. So the voltage output will go either up or down, thus controlling the output frequency of the voltage controlled oscillator. So now since the phase detector's output will always be varying, it's important to observe that even though our input FM signal and the voltage controlled oscillator's output signal will have the same frequency, they will not have the same phase. So to keep the loop stable, the circuit will never stabilize at 0 or 180, but rather an intermediate value somewhere. And this intermediate value will be constantly changing. So you need to change this to change the frequency of the VCO's output. So now let's see how the circuit actually works on a practical board. Now regarding test circuit, I'll be working with the CD4046 and I've built the FMD modulator example that's present in the datasheet. So what we have here is the type 1 phase comparator used. On the one side the input is coming from the external signal, on the other from the VCO. In between the two blocks we have our low pass filter. Now the VCO's oscillating frequency range is controlled by these two components. So if you want to work with different frequencies there's a graph with which you can set the component values. And the signal that we will be picking up is on pin 10 which is basically the same thing as pin 9. So this is the VCO's input signal. We can more clearly see this in the block diagram where we can see the VCO input also being buffered by transistor N4 into the demodulated output. So the two signals will be basically the same. Now coming to the actual circuit, I didn't go with 500 picofarads but rather 470 because well this is a standard value. The input signal is coming through a 470 nanofarad capacitor, I did the BNC connectors and also a capacitor for local decoupling. So this is the actual circuit, it's very slightly modified from what's in the datasheet. So before testing that the PLL can demodulate an FM signal, let's first see if it will actually lock onto an external signal. And for that I prepared this setup right here. So what I got here is the cable coming from the signal generator going through the first channel of the oscilloscope, which goes into the input of the PLL circuit. This is supplied from my power supply. And on the second channel, first of all, I have my oscilloscope probe. So we can see what's going on inside the circuit. So at the moment, the circuit is supplied and we have no signal coming in. So if we first check 
the output of the VCO, well, we can see that there's an oscillation going on. Now, if we check what's going on at the output of the phase detector, well, we basically see the same thing. So we see this behavior with the phase detector that the output is equal to the frequency difference of the two input signals. And the input signals are the VCO's output at 10.4, and the other input is the signal generator at nothing. So 10.4 minus zero is 10.4 kilohertz. Now, after the low pass filter, this gets well filtered and is turned into a DC level. So now coming back to the output of the VCO, let's see what happens when we actually turn on the signal generator. And now to see exactly the locking effect, the signal generator will be set to 10 kilohertz. So one way or another, the PLL has to go from the 10.4 kilohertz at which it's running at as a default value to something else. And when I turn on my signal generator, we can see it in yellow running at 10 kilohertz. We can see almost instantly that the PLL also locked onto this frequency. So both are running with a constant phase shift and at the same frequency. So the PLL can lock on to an external signal. But how fast did this lock on actually occur? I mean, we couldn't see it directly, so let's make a different measurement. And for that, I will be connecting the output of the PLL to the second channel, so we can see how the output varies based on when the input signal is applied. So what I did here, I turned on the signal generator and I triggered on this event. And if we look at the output of the PLL, we can see that it goes into an oscillation. So what this is showing us is that the PLL is not locking instantly onto the external signal. We can check using the cursors at what frequency this oscillation is going on and see that it's at around 487 Hertz. So the loop in phase lock loop is not a perfect device. It has a limited response time. So based on the elements present in the loop, it has a certain frequency at which it has a unity gain above which it cannot respond. And we can measure this crossover frequency like with any loop by applying a transient input. So in our case, the transient input is the applied frequency. And we can see that our loop starts oscillating at around 500 Hertz. So this is the crossover frequency of this particular circuit. Now, the main limiting element that is slowing down the loop is the low pass filter. So the default schematic that I've been using has a low pass filter built with a 100 kilo ohm resistor and a 100 nanofarad capacitor, which has a crossover frequency of about 15 Hertz. Now, because the rest of the circuit has a lot of gain, the total crossover frequency ends up being at 500 Hertz. So one thing that we can try to speed up our phase lock loop is play around with this RC filter. So one thing that we can try is to change the 100 kilo ohm resistor into something smaller. So I changed my resistor to a one kilo ohm resistor. And if we retry the experiment, we can see a completely different behavior. So we can see that the phase lock loop has a much faster response. There's still a bit of an oscillation going on but it's at much, much higher frequencies. Now, the downside of doing this is that you can end up creating an unstable system. So we can already see that once the input signal was activated, the output went from a relatively flat signal into something quite noisy. So here the input signal is not modulated or anything, it's stable, it's fixed, but yet the output signal seems to be quite noisy. And if we zoom into it, we can see that the output signal is oscillating at a frequency even higher than the input signal. And this is not something you want, of course. You want the output to only vary if the input signal is varying. So that is why a correct dimensioning of the low pass filter is critical for your PLL to work correctly. And finally, let's look at an actual FM modulated signal. But first I need to put back the old low pass filter. So what I did is modulate my 10 kilohertz 
carrier frequency with an 100 Hz signal and at a 20% modulation index. So the frequency is varying up and down in the range of 20%. And we can see at the output of our PLL, well, we got our 100 Hz signal out. So since this signal is at a lower frequency than the crossover frequency of our PLL loop, which was 480 Hz with the original low pass filter, the circuit is able to keep up with the varying signal. And if we zoom in a bit, we can almost make out that when our output is high, the input frequency is also higher, so we see that the oscillations are a bit more close together, whereas when the output is low, the oscillations are a bit spread out. So when the input frequency is lowest, then the output is at its lowest value. So our output is correctly following the input frequency. So now, the final thing to look at is how the output of the VCO follows the input signal. So right now, my second channel is connected to the output of the VCO, and I changed my encoding frequency to just 1 Hz. So we can see how the offset between our VCO output and our input signal is time dependent. So even though I don't have a clear phase measurement, we can see that the peak of our input signal is not always in the same place relative to the oscillation going with the VCO output. So at some point the peak of our sine wave is on the left side of our rising edge, at some point it's on the right side. So as the input frequency varies, so does the phase difference between the input signal and the VCO output. So this phase difference is needed to produce a different output to set a different frequency with our VCO. So all in all, the PLL circuit that I've built works, and well, it's supposed to work, but it shows that you can use a PLL to demodulate a frequency modulated signal. Whether it's an analog signal, like with FM encoding, or even with digital signals like frequency skip keying encoding. So all in all, hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to be up to date with all my latest videos and see you next time. Bye bye.